Hello. How are you? Here we are for some more Ross Welford's Into the Sideways World. We're so close to the end. We've just, we're going to read chapter 48 tonight, which isn't a very long chapter. And then look, we're, without losing my page. And then look. We're on part five, and that's it. The home run there. Oh my goodness, the last leg, as they say. My glasses are falling off my face. Okay, ready for chapter eight. So this is just going to be a short one. <clears throat> I'll just recap chapter 47, the end of chapter 47, just so you can remember. You ready? There's a splash in the dark water beside me, but I don't raise my head as it will be someone from the rowing boat and I just don't want to face them. Then comes a soft crunch on the sand and a gentle nudge on my hunched shoulder and I slowly uncurl myself expecting to see one of our rescuers and definitely not expecting to see what I do. <gasps> what a cliffhanger we left 47 on. So, excuse me, I'm... Hiccup in, oh my goodness. I'm excited, obvs. So, um, here we go. 48, you ready? The cog's low growl purrs in my ear. The cog! The cog is there. What? The cog's low growl purrs in my ear, then it nudges me again harder this time, as if to say, get up. I uncurl my arms and raise my head, at which point the cog moves its face right next to mine, as though it wants to peer deep into my soul. Its own amber-tinted eyes seem to be lit from within and its fish-scented breath is strangely comforting. Manny, I say slowly, unable to take my eyes off the creature. He stops his advance into the water and turns. His face is grey, all drained from his eyes as though he's already given up. <coughs> Excuse me. The sound of the rowing boat's oars is very close now and the flashlights are more intense. Hello? Anyone in there? Stay put. We're coming to get you thing is, they seem like a million miles away, almost from another world. As though in a trance, I scramble to my feet and the cog gets behind me, rising up on its hind legs, stiffening its huge triangular ears and seeming to push us both towards the back of the cave with its little paws. In a flash, I get it. The cog can pass through the dimensions as well, I yell to Manny. The cog is going to take us back. It's like it wants to. It knows. Is it doing this deliberately? I don't wait to find out. Come on, hold my hand, Manny. Now, I yell. It's me this time, all me. Manny brought us here, but I'm bringing us back. I grip Manny's clammy, half-head dead hand in mine. As the torch beams flash closer, I grab the tiny human-like paw of the cog in my other hand and place both our hands on the seam of the dark sandstone. The cog doesn't struggle but waits patiently as in seconds the grey fuzz gets thicker and thicker and fills the cave and my head and my mouth and my heart. It's working. The cog's power is taking us back through. Suddenly, with the grey mist swelling around us, the creature wriggles weakly away from me as if all of its energy, all of its life is spent. No! I shout in desperation. No! Please! Not now! It limps into the channel and leads her to the cave mouth and flops onto the surface of the water with a soft splosh, sinking slowly beneath the surface. I realise that it has given its life for me and Manny, but to no avail. It tried but failed to take us across the dimensional barrier and back to our own world. The flashlights are right upon us now. A man's voice calls with a tone of impatience. What are you doing, Willa? Another voice goes, Whoa, what was that? Did you see that, Del? What? Ah, I felt something on my leg. Oh, I see it there. Is that a dog? God almighty, it's a shark. Look at the fin. There it goes. Man, it's fast. What in the flaming egg? I'm glad the cog got away, I suppose. And now I re warily straighten up again and I wait, exhausted and drained and numb with cold, for the people who saw me go into a cave with Manny to guide me out. A torch beam flashes in my eyes. Aye, Del, it's a... A man in yellow waders, who I recognise from somewhere, steps forward out of the shallows. Willa Shafto, what the blazes is it with you in this cave? Hold on to me. Del, as if emerging from a deep well, a memory drifts back. Del, Del Malik, Dina's dad, the man who rescued me before. Del's voice booms around the cave as he yells to his companions, Got him, they're in here again. Are you... is this... I can't even formulate the right question. Is this the real world? I say. Flipping real world? 
What are you on about? I'll give you real world, miss. How come you've gone and done this again? He grabs me round the waist and lifts me up. Not roughly, but not gently either. It's like he's lifting a sack of something. He mutters as if to himself, but it isn't. You, my love, have got some serious explaining to do. Should have flaming left you. A few hours in there would have brought you to your senses. Archie, can you grab the lad? Dell is striding angrily through the water to the entrance of the cave. Flashlight beams flicking all around us. We emerge and Dell dumps me down in knee-deep water. I stare up at the concrete promenade and the seafront, where there's no music, no lights, no fireworks, no people, no WWW celebrations. Bravo, Foxtrot Delta 192. We've got them, boy and girl. Yep, same pair. Someone call their parents again. Tell them they're okay, although one of them is in fancy dress of some sort. I stand on the prom in Grandad Norman's overalls and Weldon goggles hanging around my chin. The gloves and cap have been lost somewhere. I'm shivering with cold and confusion and fear. I still have my phone. My fingers clamp around it and pull it from my damp pocket. A police officer gently tries to take the phone out of my fist. Come on, love. I'll take this. I snatch my hand back. No, get off. Oh, she was northern end. No, get off. All right, all right, it's okay. Here, put this on. Something heavy is draped around my shoulders, a police uniform jacket. I allow myself to be led up the stone steps that go to the promenade on the seafront. I gaze around speechless and everything's normal again. The cars passing on the road, the broken sign of the tatty Culvercott Hotel. Manny and I sit on the open tailgate of a police car. Someone puts a bottle of water in my hand and I take a shaky sip. I've hardly said a word since being hauled out of the cave. Around me, people are gathered, staring at me until a stern voice says, Oi, that's enough. Knock it off, folks. Give the kid some space. My teeth are no longer chattering and I take another gulp of water. I'm vaguely aware that someone has been stroking my back in a comforting gesture. I turn my head and there is a woman in a yellow jacket with Northumbria police on it and a hat with a checkered black and white band. She jerks her head at another officer who starts ushering people away, saying things like, Come on, move along, please. We're still working here. Once a bit of quiet has been restored, it seems as though it's just me and a policewoman sitting in the rear of the car. She has a kind face and she says quietly, Are you all right, love? And I nod, although more from reflex than anything else I'm really saying I'm all right. Then I feel my shoulder slump and I'm crying, sobbing in fact. The policewoman puts both her arms around me and I don't know how long I'm there, but afterwards I'm being driven in a police car back to mum and dad. I still haven't let go of my phone, my knuckles have turned white, I'm gripping it so hard, because my phone contains the proof. The proof of where I've been, the proof that the other world is real. No one's going to believe me, I can tell that already, because if I thought this was the end, it is in some ways just the beginning and there we are look up to part five so when we come back tomorrow do you think if she charges up her phone because it ran out of battery if you remember if she charges up her phone is it going to have all of those pictures on there is she going to be able to prove that the other world exists or and i really hope this isn't the ending was it all a dream i hate that ending we'll see I want a little bit of mystery, a little bit of intrigue. <gasps> okay, see you soon for chapter 49.